Welcome back to Honest News. How many know that God makes a choice? How many know that? That God, he does the choosing. It's his choice. It's not our choice. It's his choice. In fact, the scripture says that those that he has chose were chosen in him before the foundation of the world. Now, that's not the same thing as what the Calvinists believe. It simply means that God made a choice based upon the choices that we would make, that he knew we would make in his foreknowledge. He knows those that are his, and he knows those that will choose him. Amen? It seems that men have a choice, but it's not guaranteed that it's God's choice. And when it's God's choice, remember this, it will be established. God will establish what he has chosen. We're living in a day when there are those that are choosing themselves. They're not waiting on God. They're not waiting to be called. I just recently listened to a minister that I believe is a false minister that said he's a volunteer. And he was asked the question, were you called into the ministry? He said, well, I see myself as a volunteer. How many know God doesn't have any volunteers? You're either called or you're not. Amen? And the same thing goes with the chosen. Out of the called, God is making a choice. Matthew chapter 22 and verse 14. If you'd like to follow in the reading of God's word this morning. We'll be right back after this. Matthew chapter 22, beginning with verse 14. For many are called. And that doesn't mean they all answered the call. Just because they've been called doesn't mean they answer the call. Many are called. But few are chosen. Few are chosen. Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, God in heaven, we thank you for your plan, for your purpose, for your providence. We thank you, Lord, that your ways are not our ways. And that your choice is not always our choice. But that you make a choice, Lord, that shall be established. And no man, no man can stop what you want, Lord. What you desire. We ask that you bless and that you anoint as we minister your word, Lord. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Praise the Lord. Turn with me, if you will, 
to 1 Samuel chapter 13 and verse 13. The people of Israel made a choice. They desired to have a king over them like all the other nations. But that wasn't God's choice. Amen. Nonetheless, the Lord did give them a king. 1 Samuel uh, chapter 13, verse 13. And Samuel said to Saul, Thou hast done foolishly. Thou hast not kept the commandment of the Lord thy God, which he commanded thee. For now would the Lord have established thy kingdom upon Israel forever. Just because God chose Saul, it doesn't mean it was his choice. The people desired a king, and God gave them a king. But how many know that Saul was not the best choice for Israel? You see, God has a plan. He has a purpose. He has a providence. His will, people, is that the king over his people would be Jesus, the Christ. He never desired for a king to be over his people. But because the people desired to have a man to rule over them, like all the other nations, they wanted a man that would go out before them to battle, lead them to victory. They desired a king like all the other nations. And I feel like that, in a lot of ways, that's what Christendom is doing today when choosing a leader over America. They're looking for a man that will go out and do great battles and fight and bring great victories. And how many know God will give you what you want, but it may not be what you need. Amen. Even though there may be a president or a leader over this country, and it may be God's choice because he sets up whom he wills and he puts down whom he wills. But how many know that the leader that God chooses may not be the best choice? I may know that. Because God will make a choice based on the judgment or based on his judgment on the nation. Saul was not the best choice for Israel. How many know Saul was a rebuke from the Lord? He even told the people what kind of a man Saul would be. And they still desired a king. And I see God's people today all rallying and, it, and praying even, seeking, hoping that their leader will be the leader of the free world. And those are the same people in many cases that are not walking very close to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Amen. Samuel said to Saul, thou hast done foolishly. Just like the Lord told the people what kind of a man he would be. He said, he'll take your sons and make them soldiers. He'll take your daughters and use them 
as servants, as confectionaries, or as bakers, and basically Saul had what was called the draft, and he just took all the young people and put them into war. Now, I want you to understand something. He took all of Jesse's children, and he would have taken David, but he didn't. Why didn't Saul choose David? Was it because he was too young? Or is it because God has a plan? Hmm? Because the scripture says that David, he wanted to fight. He wanted to be with his brothers on the battlefield. But how many know God's ways are not our ways, people? Amen? God's ways are not our ways. Listen to this. <clears throat> Listen to this. But now thy kingdom shall not continue. It wasn't God's choice. But now thy kingdom shall not continue. Now, that's not because God wanted Saul to fail. Amen. It's because he knew, God, uh, he knew that Saul would fail. Amen. How many of you are interested in what God's interested in? How many of you really desire what God wants instead of what you want? But now thy kingdom shall not continue. The Lord has sought him a man after his own heart. And the Lord hath commanded him to be captain over his people. Because thou hast not kept that which the Lord commanded thee. So God is now making a choice. And this this chosen of the Lord is in the best interest of the people. Saul wasn't. Amen? But David was a man after God's heart. Amen? God has a plan. He has a purpose. He has providence, people. The providence of God. The will of God. Are you listening? Praise the Lord. First Samuel chapter 16, verse 1. And the Lord said unto Samuel, How long wilt thou mourn for Saul? How many of you right now are still mourning over something you wanted, over your choice, what you have chosen? Are you still yet mourning over your choice? The scripture says that Samuel was mourning for Saul even though God had rejected Saul. You think that was pleasing to the Lord, that, that Samuel the prophet was mourning for a man that God has rejected? How long are you going to mourn over things that God never intended for your life? Amen. God has a choice, people. Do you, do you have any desire? Do you have any desire in your heart for what God wants for you? Is that what you're seeking, what God wants for your life? Or are you seeking what you want for your life? The Lord said unto Samuel, How long wilt thou mourn for Saul? seeing I have rejected him from reigning over Israel. Amen. 
Fill thine horn with oil and go. I will send thee to Jesse the Bethlehemite. Listen to this. Listen to this. For I have provided, provided me a king among his sons. God has made a choice. Does it matter that God has made a choice, brothers and sisters? Do you care that God has made a choice? And Samuel said, how can I go? If Saul hear it, he will kill me. And the Lord said, take a heifer with thee and say, I am come to sacrifice to the Lord. And call Jesse to the sacrifice, and I will show thee what thou shalt do. And thou shalt anoint unto me him whom I name unto thee. God actually named David. He actually named him, people. God's choice. He named him. He told the prophet exactly who it was by name. Are you listening? And Samuel did that which the Lord spake and came to Bethlehem. And the elders of the town trembled at his coming and, he, and said, Comest thou peaceably? And he said, Peaceably, I am come to sacrifice unto the Lord. Sanctify yourselves and come with me to the sacrifice. And he sanctified Jesse and his sons and called them to the sacrifice. And it came to pass when they were come that he looked on Eliab. Eliab. And said, surely the Lord's anointed is before him. Boy, it sounds like the prophet is very confident. But just because the man of God, just because the prophet is confident, does that mean it's God's choice? Hmm? I mean, no. The people chose somebody after Judas. The, the disciples got together and they, they chose somebody based on some kind of... Uh, some kind of a vote, a lottery. And the lot fell on a certain individual, Matthias by name. And did you notice that he never is mentioned in the scripture again after that? There's no mention of him. Because God made a choice. Because God made a choice, people. And that was Saul that became Paul the Apostle. Amen. Doesn't matter what you decide. Doesn't matter what your choice is. Amen. If it's not God's choice, what God chooses is going to be established, people. Amen. Praise the Lord. Glory to the Lamb. But the Lord said unto Samuel, Look not on his countenance, or on the height of his stature? Because I have refused him. The one that the prophet was confident was going to be anointed to be king over Israel. The Lord says, I have refused him. Now, when I looked up this Hebrew word, refused, it, it means to disdain. It means to reject utterly. It means, it means God, not only does, is, is this not God's choice, but this individual was not fit. And you'll find out in a little bit here why he wasn't fit. Man thinks that 
the individual they think is going to be best for the position, but it may not be God's choice. Are you listening, people? Years ago, the Lord told me that Donald Trump was a snake in the grass, and yet God's people still think he's the hope of America. Now some are calling him the great white hope. Yeah, that's what they're calling him, the great white hope. Dear God. Do you know he doesn't have the backing anymore, the support of the evangelicals? All bets are off, people. I'm going to tell you right now, if Donald Trump becomes president of the United States, which I'm not sure he will, but if he does, he'll bring a police state to this country that you've never seen before. He'll lock it down. He wants to be king, people. He doesn't just want to be president. He wants to be king, and he wants to make sure he never, ever loses his position. He likes Putin a lot, and he likes Putin's character, and he, lo he loves Putin, people. He aspires to be like Putin. And even worse, he looks up to the leader of North Korea. I digress. Because I have refused him. For the Lord seeth not as man seeth. For man looketh on the outward appearance. But the Lord looketh on the heart. Are you listening? Now, listen to me, folks. The prophet, after this, when God says to him, no, none of these boys, none of these sons of Jesse are the one. And then the prophet actually had all of them pass before him again. Are you listening? Jesse had all his sons pass before him again. One of these boys has got to be the king. Maybe I'm not hearing God. Maybe Samuel began to say that. Maybe I'm not hearing God right. Because here they are. These are all the sons. Jesse said these are all his sons. There's nobody else. Huh? Anybody listening? And Jesse called a dinner bad. And made him pass before Samuel, and he said, Neither hath the Lord chosen this. And Jesse made Shema to pass by, and he said, Neither hath the Lord chosen this. Again, Jesse made all seven of his sons to pass before Samuel. And Samuel said unto Jesse, The Lord hath not chosen these. And Samuel said unto Jesse, Are here all thy children? Hello. Is this all of them? Are you sure these are all your boys? There's nobody else? He said, There remaineth yet the youngest. And behold, he keepeth the sheep. Huh? What's he going to do? And Samuel said unto Jesse, Send and fetch him, for we will not sit down till he come hither. <laughs> and he sent and brought him in. Now he was ruddy and with all of a beautiful countenance and goodly to look to. And the Lord said, Arise, anoint him, for this is he. Now remember, folks, David is being anointed in the midst of his rejected brethren. Hello. You think he's popular? Huh? You think you're going to be popular if God has made a choice and he's picked you? You think folks are going to like you? You think 
Folks are going to like the fact that God has picked you. <clears throat> Listen. Then Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the midst of his brethren. Huh? And the spirit of the Lord came upon David from that day forward. So Samuel rose up and went to Ramah. Anybody listening to this preacher this morning? David, the one that was overlooked. It can't possibly be David. Even Jesse didn't think it was David. But God looks on the heart, people. He doesn't look on the outward. He doesn't look on the countenance. God looks on the heart. And he said, David is a man after my own heart. Anybody listening to this preacher this morning? Listen to this. 1 Samuel chapter 17, verse 13. And the three eldest sons of Jesse went and followed Saul to the battle. And the names of his three sons that went to the battle were Eliab, the firstborn, and next unto him was Adinabad, and the third was Shammah. These were the Lord's rejected. These are the ones the Lord said, no. Nope. They're not, they're not my chosen. They're not the anointed. And David was the youngest. And the three eldest followed Saul. Listen. But David went and returned from who? Who did he return from? He returned from Saul. Why did David return from Saul? Because David wanted to fight. Because David wanted to be on that battlefield. Are you listening? Anybody listen to this preacher? Saul rejected David. The one that the Spirit of the Lord had left Saul. Saul rejected, was rejected by God. And the rejected of the Lord rejected God's choice. And so it will always be. Remember that. There's envy. There's jealousy. And we find in the story as it plays out that Saul certainly does have a jealous spirit. He has an evil spirit from the Lord that troubles him. And he is jealous of who is going to take his place. Anybody listening? He eyed David. Hmm? He eyed him. There are those in the body of Christ, they recognize there's, a, there's something different about you. They recognize that God is with you. They recognize that God's favor's on you. They recognize the anointing of God. Are you listening? And they are jealous. They are envious of you. But remember this, it's got nothing to do with you. It's God's choice. Stay humble, amen? Stay humble. Don't get uh, haughty. Don't get big-headed. It's God's plan. It's God's purpose. It's God's providence. Amen. But David went and returned from Saul to feed his father's sheep at Bethlehem. It wasn't very long after that that David was anointed to be king. Are you listening? Now, in the meantime, after David was anointed to be king and his brothers were rejected to be king over Israel, battle broke out with the Philistines. And the Philistines drew near morning and evening and presented himself 40 days. This is Goliath. And Jesse said unto David his son, Take now for thy brethren an ephah of this parched corn and these ten loaves, 
and run to the camp of thy brethren. God knows how to get us where he wants us, doesn't he? You may have to serve others to get there, and you probably will. Amen. David had no idea what was about to unfold. He had no idea that God was about to use him to bring one of the greatest victories, amen, to man. One of the greatest victories in history. One of the greatest victories. And it's still being used today as a metaphor. Even in our politics, it's being used, amen. Brothers and sisters, David went down in history. When he vict had victory over Goliath, that story is being told even today. Are you listening? David had no idea what God was about to do. It's better that way. How many know that? It's better that you and I don't know the whole thing, that we don't understand the whole plan, that we don't get in the way. Amen. David had no idea God was about to use him. David didn't step up and say, hey, brothers, I'm here because God's going to use me today to bring down that Goliath. No. <laughs> No, it didn't happen that way. And Jesse said unto David his son, Take now thy brethren an ephah of this parched corn and these ten loaves and run to the camp of thy brethren. You see, David is simply obeying his father. Sound familiar? He's about his father's business. He's doing exactly what he's been told to do. Amen. You see, David is simply being faithful. Amen. And carry these ten cheeses unto the captain of their thousand, and look how they, thy brethren fare, and take their pledge. Listen, now Saul and they and all the men of Israel were in the valley of Elah, fighting with the Philistines. And David rose up early in the morning and left the sheep with a keeper. He's faithful. He didn't just leave the sheep to themselves. He left the sheep with, in the hands of a keeper and took and went as Jesse had commanded him and he came to the trench as the host was going forth to the battle or to the fight and shouted for the battle. For Israel and the Philistines had put the battle in array, army against army. Listen. And David left his carriage in the hand of the keeper of the carriage and ran into the army, and came and saluted his brethren. And as he talked with them, his brethren, behold, there came up the champion, the Philistine, or Philistine of Gath, which is Goliath by name, out of the armies of the Philistines, and spake according to the same words, and David heard them. And all the men of Israel, when they saw the man Goliath, fled from him and were sore afraid. And the men of Israel said, Have ye seen this man that is come up? Surely to defy Israel is he come up. And it shall be that the man who killeth him, the king, will enrich him with great riches and will give him his daughter and make his father's house free in Israel. And David spake to the men that stood by him, saying, What shall be done to the man that killeth this Philistine and taketh away the reproach from Israel? For who is this uncircumcised Philistine that he should defy the armies of the living God? And the people answered it after this manner, saying, So shall it be done to the man that killeth him. Now, I want you to hear the next verse, people. This was the one that God refused. The Bible says he didn't just reject Eliab. It says he refused him. Now we're about to see why. 
And Eliab, his eldest brother, heard when he spake unto the men. And Eliab's anger was kindled against David. Hello. You think Eliab's happy with David? You think he might just be just a little bit jealous, a little envious of his little brother David? The one that was anointed in his midst. And he was rejected twice. He was refused by God. And now here's his younger brother. Here's his little brother. He's asking about the battle. He wants to fight. Are you listening? But God has another plan. And David is not going to fight like other men fight. Are you listening? There's something different about this young man. To the degree, if you read the story, you'll find he doesn't even need armor. He puts off the armor that Saul tries to give to him, his own armor, and he tries to put his sword on him and everything. And Saul, this young man that's not very big, he said, I haven't tested, I haven't proven these things. Amen. The only thing that David understood, the only thing he needed was a sling and a stone. You've read the story. If you haven't, you need to. But for you that have read the story, David was used by God, not because he was the tallest, not because he was the most handsome, not because he was the choice of the prophet, not because he was the choice of Jesse, not because he was the choice of his other brothers, not because he was the choice of man, but because God had chosen David. Are you listening? God made a choice, and it makes a difference, brothers and sisters, who God chooses. Amen. I know this generation don't care about God's choice. They don't care what God thinks. They just call themselves. They just think they can run right into the battle. They can do whatever they want to do. And they just, all they got to do is slap God's name on it. All they got to do is slap God's uh, son's name on their, on their operation or their plan or whatever they want to do. And they just say, oh, God's got to do this and God's got to do that. And before you know it, they actually think they can command God. They think they can tell God what to do. But God says, I've refused. I've rejected Saul. I rejected your choice. And right in the midst, here David is right in the midst of his brethren that were chosen by man to go into battle. He's not chosen. He's not God's choice. What's he going to do? What's David going to do? What's he up to now? Look at David. What's he out here doing now? We know he wants to fight. We know he wants to be on the battlefield. But Saul sent you home. Can you see the pride, people? Can you see the arrogance of Eliab's? It says Eliab's anger was kindled against David. What's David doing? What's he doing that's so terrible that his brother's anger is kindled against him? Why comest thou down hither? Why'd you come down here, David? And with whom hast thou left those few sheep in the wilderness? Boy, he's even picking on him about how many sheep are in the wilderness. Probably wasn't a few sheep. Probably was a lot of sheep. But his jealousy and his anger, his, his envy, he belittled David. Even in his faithfulness to take care of the sheep. I guarantee you this. Eliab didn't like to take care of the sheep. Eliab wasn't a shepherd. Amen. Eliab wasn't a man after God's own heart. Eliab wasn't faithful in the little. Amen. Brothers and sisters. Eliab was one of those that wanted to be seen. He wanted to be recognized. He knew he was tall. He knew that he was handsome. He knew that everybody looked up to him. But God says I have refused him. Amen. 
don't expect man's choice. Don't expect even the prophet's choice. Don't expect those that think they're really something to be in your corner, if you will. Don't expect them to support you. Don't expect those that envy you and are jealous of you to support you. I believe with all my heart, brothers and sisters, there are many in the church today that, like Saul, they have an evil spirit that troubles them. And every time the anointing comes, are you listening? Every time God glorifies himself with his chosen, with his anointed, they're envious. They're jealous. They want what you have. Are you listening? Praise the Lord, people. God has made a choice. That doesn't change anything. Just because there are those that envy you and are jealous of you and persecute you doesn't mean you quit. It doesn't mean you give up. Amen? Just because everybody around you seems to reject you, that doesn't mean you give up. Amen? You stay faithful. You remain faithful. Listen to what Eliab says about David. Listen to what he says. I know thy pride. I know your pride, David. I know the naughtiness of thine heart. Isn't that exactly how those that envy you, those that are jealous of you, isn't that how they look upon you? Amen? Nothing his brother was saying about him was true. It was all lies. It was all in his imagination. There was nothing that David was guilty of other than being faithful. He didn't choose to be anointed to be the king of Israel. It wasn't his choice. It was God's choice. It was God's choice. David wasn't being proud. Amen. When he went out on that battlefield and all the words he said. Who is this uncircumcised Philistine when all the other, all the others, including his own brothers, are terrified, afraid of this Goliath? David wasn't out there showing off, people. Amen. David wasn't showing off in front of his brothers. This wasn't about pride. This wasn't about the naughtiness of his heart. This was about faithfulness. This is about David simply being faithful. Amen. How many know it's not enough to be called? It's not enough to even be chosen by God. The Bible says we need to be faithful. We need to be faithful. Praise the Lord. Matthew chapter 22, verse 14. For many are called. And let me tell you, those that are called but not chosen by God, they're going to be jealous of you. They're going to be envious of you. And I want you to understand, God is no respecter of persons. It's not that he chooses some and doesn't choose others. It's that in his foreknowledge, he knows the choice you're going to make. He knew the choice that, that Judas was going to make. It's not that he predestined Judas to uh, be who Judas was. It's he knew what Judas was going to do. And God knows what you're going to do. God knows the choice you've made. And that will play out. But God already knows the choice you've made. That ought to make you tremble. Amen? That ought to terrify you. 
God knows the choice that you have already made. Not because you've made that choice, but because he knows the choice you're going to make. He knows the end from the beginning. He has chosen some in Christ before the foundation of the world based on their choice that he knew they would make. Amen. Many are called, but few are chosen. Revelation chapter 17, verse 14. These shall make war with the Lamb. The nations of the world are going to make war with the Lamb of God. All that you're seeing that's happening on the earth today is all going to culminate eventually where all the nations are going to make war with the Lamb. You talk about a battle. You talk about a battlefield. Listen to me. What we see David experiencing on the battlefield with Goliath, all the nations of the world are going to gather against the Lamb of God. And the Lamb shall overcome them. For he is Lord of lords and King of kings. And they that are with him are called, chosen, and faithful. Are you listening? You see, way back there where men wanted a king over them, God had a plan. He has a purpose. He has providence. This is his king. Amen. Not Saul, not David, but Christ. Jesus Christ the King of kings and the Lord of lords. And notice what it says. He has the chosen with him. Those that are faithful glory to God. Not the called that weren't chosen, but the called and the chosen and the faithful. Praise God. He knows the choice. He knows your choice. He already knows what you're going to do. He already knows what you're going to ask before you even ask. Before you even pray, God already knows what you're going to ask. Amen. Praise the Lord. Before the foundation of the world, the scripture says, he made a choice, brothers and sisters. He made a choice. He knows the choice that you're going to make. Before you even make it, it's your choice. Did you know the Calvinists believe that God in his sovereignty, he chooses some and rejects others? They really believe that. They put together the, the sovereignty of God with the predestination in his choice. And he says, man has nothing to do with it. How foolish. That would mean we're not free moral agents. That would mean we were all slaves. They, they have a slave mentality. Calvin, John Calvin had a slave mentality. And there are those today that still have a slave mentality. You know why they like that doctrine? that God makes a choice, that it's not up to them, it's not their responsibility. You know why, they, why, why that happens? That is exactly why. Because they don't want to have any responsibility. They want to put it all on God. It's all God's responsibility. It's all of what God wants. I have nothing to do with it. I just happen to be one of the ones that he made a choice to pick. Sorry, everyone else. I'm one of his favorites. <laughs> everyone can be his chosen. 
It's up to you. Don't allow man to hold you back. Don't be concerned the way they're looking at you. Don't don't be concerned if they're being overlooked. You know, the only thing you have to do is be faithful. Amen. Like David, just be faithful. Be faithful in the little things. Be faithful in whatever God gives you to do. Just be faithful in it. You don't know. You just don't know. You may not have anything in this life that God will use you to do as far as anything that's going to be of any great reward. But how many know if you're faithful, this could be you. Revelation 17, verse 14. Those that are with the King of kings and the Lord of lords are called, chosen, and faithful. Praise God. Going to ride with him on white horses. The whole world is going to gather together and make war with him. Are you listening? I read the lamb shall overcome them. They overcame even the dragon by the word of their testimony, by the blood of the lamb, by the word of their testimony, love not their lives unto the death. How many know if you are with him, you can't be defeated. If the Lord be for you, who can be against us? Amen. It's all about being submitted to him and following him. And he never has have ever had a defeat. How many know Calvary was not a defeat? Satan would like you to believe that Calvary was a defeat. The, the Catholic Church tries to keep him on the cross. He's not here. Why are you seeking the living among the dead? He's not here. He is risen. Amen. King of kings and Lord of lords. Not everyone's going to ride with him. Not everyone is going to return with the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Only the called, chosen, and the faithful. God bless you.